you're going to learn a little bit about how the platform actually works. And I understand that I will hand over the uh, word to Brian first, who is the co-chair of the platform and uh, active at EFA to describe that for us, please. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, M uh, Melinda. Thank you very much. And uh, also, uh, thank you, Hastin uh, and Tosida, for hosting today's event and, and the roadshow, which is very important uh, to us in the platform. I'm very pleased personally to be back in, in, in Scandinavia uh, as a Lambrooks economista from what used to be called Norgris Lambrooks High Schooler. I have a strong affection and closeness to Scandinavia, and this is a wonderful chance to come back to Scandinavia and to Stockholm, which I visited before. Also to see friends from CEDA, from Mats and Marie in the audience, who we work closely with on the platform. I'm very pleased to see a few moments ago, Karen Isaacson, who, wearing my EFAD hat, uh, together we were working on the EFAD Sri Lanka program. We had a very close working relationship with Swedish CEDA, who was supporting EFAD in agricultural smallholder development, with uh, smallholder nutrition and uh, domestic food supplies. A very encouraging uh, relationship that we had uh, with, with the team. So that's my background. I'm an EFAD staff member in, in Rome, International Fund for Agricultural Development, and very happy to have been the co-chair of the Global Donor Platform <coughs> uh, for the last uh, few years. And I want to use this opportunity to describe a little bit about wh what the platform is, and implicitly, therefore, for you to understand at CEDA and also uh, from Finland, and I'm very glad that San Elisa has come across from Helsinki because Finland is part of the platform as well. Uh, to understand what the platform does and how you're able to uh, to contribute uh, to it. The platform was formed in in, in 2003 by uh, now 34 member organisations, and uh, Sweden and Finland both joined in early days in 2005. And then Sweden became a board member in 2009, and very happily, Finland joined that uh, this year as members of the board. 34 member organizations, but very much focusing all of us on the importance of agriculture and rural development central to poverty reduction. If we're looking at the MDB goals, we're looking at poverty alleviation, where is poverty most prevalent in many of the countries that we work in, in the rural areas? So we find that therefore the networking and the knowledge exchange between us as donors and also lobbying within our institutions is important. Many of the institutions uh, are concerned to improve the, the, the quality of development assistance to, to ARD and focus more of our budgets on, on the ARD uh, programs. But understanding as we work together the need for a coordinated global approach, particularly since the Paris Declaration, the work that's gone on since then with uh, the Accra High Level Forum and most recently the Busan Outcome Document. Many of our, uh, the countries that we work in need donors to be on the same page, uh, not having high transaction costs with government, and that equally and I think importantly applies to the agricultural sector. So what the platform is doing then is networking for partnership and it was really very pleasing to hear about Siani this morning and the work it's doing here in Sweden. We're networking for partnership between all the organizations that you can see on that slide. The World Bank, FAO from the multilaterals, African Development Bank joined an active member a few years ago and the bilaterals, with Sweden and Finland uh, leading the, the, the Scandinavian uh, network. This in issue of, of the knowledge that we, that we believe is important came through strongly at our most recent annual General Assembly, which we held in Berlin in January. <coughs> As you've seen from the array of equipment on the left-hand side of the room here, it's all about knowledge tools. How do we get messages across? How can we communicate with each other? We talk about the tools that are going to be the roots of our networking for knowledge. We're talking about our members who come to us and say, this is what our organizations want to focus on. This is what we want to network about. That gives us the opportunity to start to develop thematic areas and to start to harvest that knowledge and start to share that knowledge around our membership. We all realize that our resources internally are very, very tight. They're getting tighter in the present financial climate. We need to share our knowledge and share our skills for what we're able to what we're able to achieve. On the basis of that, that 
tree of ideas, and we stressed at the annual general meeting in Berlin that that tree, I'm just going to flick back to it, every idea on that tree, you can't see the little post-it notes, but those post-it notes were put there by the members themselves, those 34, meant that the members themselves were interested and committed to working on those themes. It wasn't that they wanted to give it to someone else to do. They said, no, we want to work on that theme. We're prepared to do that and network that information. What were the themes then that came out of our, our discussions? Aid effectiveness and results was a key issue. Again, push, pushing on from Busan and Paris. But as you all know, your taxpayers here in Sweden, just as my taxpayers back in the UK, are demanding to know where their money goes and is it achieving results. Results is coming through as a strong, a strong, uh, strong network. The importance of agricultural research is coming through. Canadian Cedar is particularly keen in our group to, to lead that. The Africa support program through CADEP has been an important theme. Climate change, again, we wanted to bring our knowledge of what we believe will be interesting to Swedish CEDA and to Finland here today on climate change and resilience in agriculture. Gender equity in youth is, 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 is clearly one of our issues and it's been CEDA that's been pushing that as a theme within the platform. Nutrition and agriculture, pastoralism and livestock has been coming through from the Horn of Africa experience and again, still the importance of post, the post-harvest losses. How much is being lost at the farm uh, level to post-harvest losses? We can increase production, but if we, lose that if we lose that production immediately after harvest, it's of no use to, to anyone. And I just wanted to emphasize again one of the diagrams that came through from the annual General Assembly on what we're doing in terms of, of, of nutrition. Uh, that group is now thinking of a policy brief that they're going to put together. That policy brief will be circulated by the platform and it'll be used to try and develop the, the, the thinking and the approaches of our other members in terms of uh, their agricultural policy approach. So guiding, guiding what does the platform do? How does it allocate its resources? We've developed a small strategic plan that's highlighted those areas, highlighted the importance of advocacy and knowledge exchange. And again, our annual report, which is going to be coming out any moment now, according to Pascal, uh, <laughs> as soon as Ethan finishes its input, um, is, going to be st is going to be talking about this importance of, of, of networking, one of our key pieces of, of, of work that will be coming out this year. I want to talk a little bit more about the, the importance of, of, of knowledge exchange. Pascal is going to go into some of the details of this uh, in a few moments. What's driving the work that we do and the focus on this is try to avoid duplication even within our institutions. You well know that within your institutions, there are obviously different groups doing the same thing. We find that also within our own membership. We want to avoid the duplication, inform others what we're doing, take out what are the best practices, and we're going to be talking about a little bit later, and Elwin, jo Elwin Granger-Jones from EFAD, when he talks about uh, uh, climate later on, we'll be talking about climate smart agriculture. Cross-referring information sources, where can you find information? This is where the platform's website comes to the fore, where you can go and find links to information that you need. And increasingly, this important point, providing a space for interaction between policymakers and practitioners. Again, it's why we've tried to got Twitter online today. What sort of interaction can we get between our membership uh, and our clients on the issues of climate change? And the platform is trying to develop that, that space uh, for that. Through events like today, but other events that we hold uh, th throughout, throughout the year. When we formed the platform in, 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 in 2003, agriculture was low down on the international agenda. It was low down on agencies' agenda. And advocacy was Im important then to get the profiles and the budgets within agencies higher and also within the, <coughs> the larger environment. So it's still an issue. And as financing becomes tighter from, from our donors, we believe there's still an important advocacy message in, in generating and promoting common messages of the importance of the agricultural sector and raising the profile of ARD in various fora. That means that, for example, the platform, and again, and its members, was present at the Agriculture and Rural Development Day and the, uh, the COP17 in Durban. The platform had both been present in uh, the previous meeting in Cancun, as well as in, in Copenhagen. We went to the high-level forum in, in Busan, where the platform hosted some knowledge events, 
with civil society and the private sector, and then joined together with EFAD, World Food Programme, and OECD, specifically looking at food security. There's a packed agenda at Busan, but we've got a high audience uh, recognition for bringing agriculture onto the agenda at the high-level forum in, in Busan. Again, I mentioned earlier, our, <coughs> our most recent annual general assembly in Busan, a very good networking event, produced all those themes of work that we were we were been developing in 2012 and particularly in in 2012 on the back of some work we did last year uh, supported with the overseas development institute in london we've been looking at the strategic role of the private sector it's recognized that we are not going to have enough donor funding to provide the investment that the agricultural sector needs if donors can't provide that where does that financing come from it can come from the public sector from governments in country. It's also going to have to come from private investors, both local and foreign. Arguably, most importantly, local investors. What guidance, therefore, do individual donors need to work better with domestic private sector and foreign private sector to support and encourage agriculture investment? Doesn't, it's not always about land, but there are issues about land, and you know the debate that's going on about the land grab. Bear in mind in that debate, the major transactions are domestic, not foreign. How can you stop illicit, illegal purchase of land by domestic investors? That's one thing you will not find in the newspapers. That's the debate that we need to have. But there's a lot of work still to be done in the private sector. And EFAD has been working closely with one or two of the donors. One of our work streams of how we can do a little bit more coordination uh, with the private sector in improving agricultural investment in the in the uh, in, in ARD. So just to begin to close again, some of the, the examples of our work, as I mentioned earlier, we have the, the synthesis paper on agricultural research prioritization uh, with EFAD, with Canadian CEDA, with FAO. Uh, we will be not going to, to Rio. We're observing the importance of, of, uh, of, of carbon emissions and the platform will be based in Bonn and will be based in Bonn, but networking with all our members feeding in results and ideas that are coming out of Rio and posting those onto the, onto the, uh, the, the Global Platform's website. And again, expanding the use of our current knowledge and exchange technology. Using events like this to develop knowledge, using our WebEx meetings, which we hold now fairly regularly to take a particular point of view, 45 minutes discussion because time to all of us is precious, a 45 minute discussion linking a particular, particular issue. And we'd very much like to get from you today, from Finland and from, from, from Sweden, ideas of topics that you would like us, the platform, to come back to you in a month or so's time and said, right, we're going to have a 45-minute session on this topic or this topic. So please give some thought to, to those ideas about what you'd like to see the platform circulate back to you in terms of, of knowledge. I'll uh, close there with a thank you again to Kirsten and the, and the team here. Uh, from CEDA for arranging uh, this, after, this afternoon's event and I uh, hold back to you Melinda. Thank you.